And so it, it came to a point where I was like, I have no choice. I either quit now, which I would regret for the rest of my life, or I just do something about it. Uh, and then, you know, after Sherlock Holmes, the, the internet and the YouTubing tutorials and such, I came across one of your videos and uh, you broke it down uh, very easily and you made it relatable. Uh, everything from the struggle of uh, the situation I was in, but also make it like, yeah, it will be tough, but it will be tough for the right reasons. Instead of figuring out how I should write, I can now instead have the luxury problem of thinking what to write. And that's a whole different type of challenge to have, a much preferred one. So um, first of all, Shine, congratulations, because I know that you've handed in your thesis for proofreading and you got a green light on that. So that's good to go. And you're now finishing your paper. So well done. Thank you. Yes. And you know, I, I want to dive deeper into like how you achieved all that and share yeah. maybe some strategies that have helped you achieve that. So hopefully any any other PhD students watching this can can also apply similar strategies to help them, you know, finish their own PhDs and, and publish papers. Yeah. So um, before maybe we get into those specific strategies that allowed you to finish your, your thesis, write a paper, I just want to you know, get a little bit of context. So, you know, you're a PhD student in computer human interaction, but what, what exactly do you do? And what's, what, what's the, what's the value that you're trying to provide with your research? So simply put, you can, I can, we'll talk about it briefly from a general point of view and then what the thesis is about. So it's about virtual reality, as you just mentioned, but specifically how can we use virtual reality to involve the type of stakeholders that typically are not involved because of their lack of knowledge on how to interpret and understand 2D drawings and 3D models in the construction industry. But how we could establish a mutual language, i.e. virtual reality. So that would be like you are entering the, uh, the 3D model and stepping into it at one-to-one scale, which is way more understandable than a 2D drawing viewed on a flat screen. And so I'm trying to look into how we can establish those kind of user involvement processes uh to simply put uh, design better buildings uh intended for its main purpose for helping those that are going to work there uh so that's my general take on it and the thesis specifically had looked on that part what i just described but also well visual understanding is one thing but how does it comply with say design guidelines and the design requirements specifically just because something is understandable does not necessarily mean that it complies with design requirements. And so I try to create with this thesis an understanding for what type of design tool uh, would we need to develop to satisfy the criteria of visual understanding as well as compliance with design requirements. So that's what the thesis is about. Super, super interesting stuff. And I imagine, yep. you know, this virtual reality will be entering a lot of different Fields. There's more yeah. to it than only Meta and Facebook, so <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Yeah, about. <laughs> I can, I can, I can imagine. Yeah. So, yeah. if we can backtrack, maybe to you know to when you joined PhD Accelerator, that was yeah. what, like six months ago, nine months ago. Yeah, six months ago, approximately. Yeah, uh, seven, seven, eight. Yeah, something along those what, lines. What was going on at the time? Why, why did you decide to? to well, join what was not going on, Marek? Uh, I'll tell you this much: it was a lot of anxiety. Uh, it was a lot of panic. Uh, I will be personal now. I had a bit of uh, panic attacks, and uh, it was very difficult uh, to be frank. I was struggling with how to really like how should I handle my situation. It was it was very difficult because the resources I was provided at university, I simply felt like they were not good enough for me to understand. I'm a person who thinks a lot in images. And so for me, when I was given a book to read on academic writing, I know it worked for a lot of PhD students, but on the other hand, I know for a lot of PhD students, it did not work. And I was part of the latter group. And so I found it even more uh, difficult and I felt more pressure to perform uh, for my supervisors and everyone around me and kind of killed the genuine curiosity I had for research and why I did it in the first place. And so it, it came to a point where I was like, I have no choice. I either quit now, which I would regret for the rest of my life, or I just do something about it. Uh, and then, 
you know, after Sherlock Holmes, the, the internet and the YouTubing tutorials and such, I came across one of your videos and uh, you broke it down uh, very easily and you made it relatable. Uh, everything from the struggle of uh, the situation I was in, but also make it like, yeah, it will be tough, but it will be tough for the right reasons. Instead of figuring how I should write, I can now instead have the luxury problem of thinking what to write. And that's a whole different type of challenge to have, a much preferred one. So yeah, I guess that's the story on how it came about your your help. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so like the the anxiety and everything, was it to do because you, you didn't know how to write the thesis and the papers, exactly. how to structure them, how to put yeah. your ideas into words or what was going yeah. on? Exactly. And I mean, I was a bit running late according to my schedule study plan that had been set up. And so uh, I was pressured from my supervisors and from everyone around me, like, how is it going? How is it going? And uh, I was uh, uncomfortable with telling them straightforward, like the, the, the resources that I've been given, they, they're not good enough for me, simply. Uh, I don't learn this way. Uh, so it just got, the, the pressure just got reinforced, the anxiety just got worse and worse. And so, yeah, that, that, the, the, that's how I saw the need for me to look at alternative ways uh, for getting help. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. And you mentioned that pressure as well from from the supervisor and everything. Can we share what happened like a few months later? I remember that your supervisor's reaction to your to your writing. You yeah, you yeah, exactly. Uh, well, there was two uh, occasions. Uh, one was recent, but the first one I think you're referring to was I was three months in, I think, into the program, and <laughs> they commented with one of the. I think the third or fourth draft of the thesis. Uh, they were like, I don't know what's going on, but uh, whatever you're doing, you're on the right track. Just keep doing this. Just write like this. Because j just for the viewers I want to share, because of my unconfident ability to write, I kind of hid behind fancy words and gibberish. And, you know, if I use this word, this sounds cool. But in reality, I was just not confident in my ability to write and not even in the material itself, the content. So I, hide, I hid behind those fancy ways of articulating myself. But uh, when I shifted over and what is also uh, a recurring theme in your, the program is keep it simple, like stop the yapping about and just go straight to the point, but don't just waffle as the key word is. And so when I learned to write simple and straight to the point, it not only made the research understandable for me, but also for uh, the reader as well. And I think that specifically was what I was getting praised for, is writing it simple. So that was the key yeah. point. Yeah, I think I think sometimes, you know, researchers or PhD students really overcomplicate things with the, with the language. And I, d I don't know who said it, but like the real art is to like express complex things in simple terms, not the other way around. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think sometimes in research, we forget about that. Yeah. Exactly. And that's yeah. been specifically apparent now with the thesis, which is the second point uh, where I got the feedback from the head professor, uh, the former head of division at our division, uh, which is just had read through it, just skimmed through it. But still, she emailed and said, I just want to compliment you. This is a good read. Even on a, on a first read, I was I'm impressed. Uh, and that felt really good because, uh, <laughs> rightfully for so, she was one of the first people to criticize my writing six months prior. So it was very cool to see the same uh, person giving me that whole different set of feedback. Uh, and so that, I think that on its own is an indication of the improvement. Absolutely. No, that's that's fantastic feedback to get, especially if before that same person <laughs> was criticizing you for yeah. you. For your writing yeah that's that's fantastic so now, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to get some more personalized help when writing and publishing your research papers then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation we're going to dive deeper into your challenges and also pinpoint your exact goals and outline a personalized strategy and a plan for you that will help you to overcome your challenges and get to your goals much faster if this interests you then the link to schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video fantastic so can you tell us 
you know, maybe about one or two things that that have helped you to go from, you know, feeling anxious, lacking in confidence to now kind of like by the sound of it, writing a really good thesis that your supervisors are, are complimenting yeah. you on? Yeah, uh, for sure. I want to emphasize, Marek, I think for me it was taking daily action. Like there is no way around it. I think you remind us in the program that like daily action is the key to success because it's not like we could think our way through more text. <laughs> we have to take action to produce more text. So um, I think that was the key. So that's the first step. That first order of business is just getting into this daily habit of writing something as simple, like a muscle really in the gym, 200 words per day. And I use that to admit, okay, 200 words, 200 words. I got eight hours in a day. <laughs> I feel lazy, but I'm not going to judge myself. But I accomplished that within one week. Okay, this is not so bad. And then incrementally, I added like 50 words, 100 words. And then when I was two months into the program, three months into the program, I was writing like six to 800 words per day. And it didn't feel that difficult. But six months prior to that, prior to joining the program, I tried with 800 words and it just got gibberish because I didn't know the structure, tried to use fancy words and so on and so forth. But now with the program, I had the fundamentals and I just like a layer of pyramid, I built upon those skills. Uh, and that was super helpful. And then of course, to be specific, apart from the daily action was also going meaning by meaning, like word by word, what do I mean by this sentence? So it's not like writing a sentence and saying, so what? No, every sentence has to make sense in the larger context of the paragraph, for example. And I think that was really helpful as well, because then I felt confident in those 400 to 800 words that were produced. So in terms of those daily actions, I mean, it sounds like something simple, but I know that it's very difficult, right? <laughs> uh, to take those daily actions. So why why didn't you take those daily actions before with the writing? And in other words, like what advice would you give to PhD students in your situation where they're like, they're yeah. not writing daily or what they're writing is gibberish, as you said, <laughs> how can they start taking daily actions? I think like many things in life, you have to be pragmatic with yourself and realize that we're not so good with something, you have to first identify, okay, I am where I am and not uh, kid yourself in that sense. But also more importantly, it's like a tsunami wave of anxiety that, you know, you washes over you in terms of like things you must do. But if you break it down, everything from, for me, it helps. I was very easily distracted by my phone and just something as simple as putting it away, not even viewing it or, you know, keeping to my daily schedules and like, it was different. What I'm trying to say, what I'm saying without saying is that before I felt overwhelmed by everything around me and academic writing was one of those things, but particularly the most anxi anxiety feeling task. But now with the program, I learned kind of flipping it. Like the, one of the main skills of a good PhD student towards the journey of becoming an independent researcher is to learn how to write is to learn how to produce and is to learn how to be disciplined. And I think like when I, when I learn like I had a paradigm shift, really. Uh, so it's not only, oh, I learned how to write better. No, 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 it's, it goes beyond that. I think that's what really, without exaggerate, that's what I really learned in the program. Like you want to become an independent researcher, regardless of your field, learn how to write better because then it's like a like a ripple effect on water. It just spread to other parts of my PhD task teaching. I became better at teaching to my students. I was supervising what they should write in their text for their bachelor and master thesis. So, you know, uh, when I was teaching in the classroom, giving seminars, I felt confident because what I'm talking about now, I can feel, you know, I feel good about that. I know what I'm talking about. And last but not least, when I'm giving feedback back to my supervisor on my weekly progress, I felt like I've done this. So it, by all started with what? It started with learning how to write better. Be, whereas before it was, what should I start with? What should I do? What should I prioritize? But with the program, I learned, okay, there is actually an order to things. First is learn to write better. Everything else is pretty much a distraction or down the priority. So that, that's what I really, really extracted from the course is learning how to prioritize. What is important for me as a PhD student? It's not uh, becoming a better teacher. I'm, I'm not here in the university to become a better teacher. 
as part of my tasks, but it's not the main task. It's to learn how to write and make my research relatable. Sorry, I went yeah, on a rant now, but <laughs> no, no, I think I think that's that, that's an amazing point because no. for, I think for some reason, yeah, a lot of PhD students get it completely wrong, meaning that you know writing is the least of priorities. It's at the very bottom of priorities, and that's why a lot of a lot of people get into the problem where they're in the third or fourth year of the PhD and they've hardly written anything and they don't even know how to write because they haven't been writing. Everything else is a priority, writing is further down the list, right? Yeah. 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 Whereas and for you, you just flipped it. You just flipped it. And I also want to add is like the, the cool thing was with part of the program is uh, really appreciated was having the op option of having uh, given feedback from one of you. And uh, that really helped me in the beginning. and later as well but specifically in the beginning because i had no idea how to sort things out then if i was even on the right track it's easy to tell someone do this and then <laughs> you feel like you're on your own but with better resources that doesn't matter but when you're given the right resources i.e how to write better and being guided in that process i felt like i had uh, extra supervisor just for writing uh, as i put it to my supervisors here in the university so it felt like i had a fourth supervisor <laughs> just exclusively before writing and that's why i really took away from also the course because then i could focus also more on the phenomena i was trying to understand and then i had better problems in front of me instead of what should i do it was like what do i want to do uh, in terms of writing that meant uh, this is would be really interesting how can we make a research question out of that for example, I think it's different puzzle pieces coming together uh, and last but not least, many things now, but uh, the visual aspect, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm a very visual person. I like to paint, for example, and I think in images. And so like having the, the resources available in the program being uh, given in a more visually aesthetic, for lack of better expression, format really helped me you talk about this in your videos in youtube as well but like the inverted pyramid for example and all that that really really helped me uh, it was not a page out of a book it was really you can think about this way and then i could connect different pieces so I really appreciate that. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to get some more personalized help when writing and publishing your research papers, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're going to dive deeper into your challenges and also pinpoint your exact goals and outline a personalized strategy and a plan for you that will help you to overcome your challenges and get to your goals much faster. If this interests you, then the link to schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation is right below this video.